another super windy day. We got wind warnings, we got branches down everywhere. What is with the wind? So, I was supposed to guide today, but we rescheduled that because spay casting in the wind, not so fun. So, guiding tomorrow instead. So, I'm headed over to the house to work. I might have to start up the generator because we got no power. So, might as well get some work done. Here we go. It's a little noisy because I got the generator running, but I was gonna work on putting the next coat of clear on these boards here, but that's not gonna work because some of them are still wet. So I just cleared them last night. That didn't give them quite enough time to dry in the cold weather. So instead, I'm gonna turn my attention up there to the skylight. So once I get the drywall up on the skylight, the side panels here, I can get into the attic space to insulate these two sides and also that back shouldn't be a problem. But this short side right there, that's gonna be really difficult for me to get insulation behind that because I am not a uh, tiny, tiny person. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so what I did is I cut two pieces of two inch um, foam, the Pink Panther stuff there, two pieces virtually the same size that are two inches thick. So I have a total of four inches of insulation on that side of the skylight. And then I'm gonna come in and uh, fill in the uh, edges and the gaps with great stuff. So I gotta buzz over to the other house and grab my great stuff. I'm keeping it over there because it's warm and not freezing cold. So I'm gonna walk over there, grab that, and come back and start filling in gaps. All right, so I filled all my gaps and cracks around that whole perimeter. And then I also did on the front, if I can show you this little bead up there on the bottom, and then the gap that was in the top up there by the skylight. It's one of the cool things about that great stuff gun is that you can have a lot better control over it. You can get a lot more precise with that bead of foam. I like it. Oops, it looks like me and Robert uh, were off on our marks for the glue on the drywall. We're spreading it on the drywall first instead of on the truss because we were, we tried putting it on the truss and it just drips down onto the floor. So we didn't want that. So we've been marking the drywall and it looks like we got most of them right. We were way off on this board for some reason. That's pretty funny. But I'm up here kind of poking my head through the skylight because these two bars that go down there and connect the island where I have to run the power through. I decided since they're up in the attic and the insulation might only come to here or so, that these things will probably get really cold and that cold will transmit because they're steel all the way down there. Might not be a big deal, but I'm gonna cut this one off since there's no wiring through it. I'm just going to cut this one off low. And this one I can't really cut off because we have wires running through it already. I could just put a junction box over there, disconnect them, all that jazz. But I think I'm just going to wrap that with insulation. So that'll be my solution for that. All right, that was easy enough. I got to tell you, the cordless uh, Sawzall got to be one of the best inventions ever. So I'm going to just put some duct tape around the top of that and call that good. I decided since I'm risking my life, I might as well do that other side of the skylight too. So I did the big side and I'm even debating going up to Menards and getting some inch and a half 
styrofoam so I can fill in all of those little triangles and trapezoids up there on both sides of the, where is it? It's up there, yeah, right there. And to save me the time from going up in the attic and getting a froth pack and spending 400 bucks and doing it that way. I feel like this would be a more economical way to do it, especially since I'm uh, being daring at the moment. So it's either that or I'm going skydiving today. So I've got to figure out which one, but the foam would probably be cheaper. So I'm gonna go for that. The wind is ripping today. So I got these galvanized panels out here. I sprayed a little bit more peroxide on them. They're rusting really good. Look, look at this. How cool is that? If you like rusty galvanized anyways, like me. So the wind is throwing these things all over the place though. It's so windy. Like right now, it's perfectly calm. But in five seconds, it can do like a 50 mile an hour gust. All right, I'm running errands. All right, I'm back from Grand Rapids. I picked up the foam. I picked up some two by fours, two by sixes. And I went over to my buddy Rob's and picked up his scaffolding, except for the wheels. I think he has wheels for it and I didn't see those. But it's probably like how I look in the fridge and don't see what's in there either. I just needed my wife with me. But I gotta unload that stuff now. I don't even know where I'm gonna put all this stuff. This house already is so packed. I gotta find a spot for it, and this wind is insane. So I'm looking out my front door, and my buddy deers are out there. Look at They're looking at me. I know they can see me in here. At least the one is. Just hanging out. All right, so here's what I'm doing. I've got these fancy little triangles and trapezoids in the trusses filled in with inch and a half foam, since that's the same width as the truss. And then I'm adding another two inch piece on top of that. So this giant one right here is gonna cover the whole thing. So I'll screw that one down and then I'll go in and fill any little cracks and gaps with great stuff. And that should be that. Then I won't have to climb up in the attic and insulate it. That'll be nice. But for right now, I'm just gonna enjoy these little guys here. It's well after dark. That took a little longer than I thought. Man, it seemed like everything. Takes a little longer than I think. I might have to change my expectations. I'll show you what I did though. So Skylight has two inches solid piece on this side of foam and then inch and a half inside all of the gaps there. And then I filled in any little crack I could find with great stuff. Foam, both sides have uh, or both ends, so this end and that end have a total of four inches of foam. This side over here was a little trickier because the drywall was already up, so I had to cut that piece into three sections to get it up there and then just butted them back up to each other. Filled in the top with great stuff, so I feel really good about this. I feel like it's very well insulated and should hold the heat. I'm not a huge fan of just a big mess. And this place right now is a big mess. Look at this. My wife would be so disappointed. So I think the first uh, thing of duty for me, actually the second Saturday morning, I have to go get the trim tech stuff in Grand Rapids. Talked to that guy today and it was supposed to come in tonight and I have to guide all day tomorrow. So Saturday morning, I'm gonna have to run down there and pick that up so we can finish drywall on Saturday. My bud Robert's coming back and I think he's bringing his friend Trevor 
who helped with some of the electric stuff too. And then those guys are gonna crank out drywall with my help, of course. Actually, it might just be my supervision. Like they need that. Okay, so I might be working on cleaning up this disaster and moving stuff around so they can actually do some work. So I'm whipped. It's Thursday night. I am tired. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna eat something and chill out for a while. Maybe I'll watch a chick flick. Good morning. It's Monday morning. And I know it's getting harder every day to take me seriously with this. Look at this. I told my wife, I am not getting a haircut until we move into this house. So hopefully that'll be soon or I'm gonna look like Rapunzel. And I told her that uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, cause my, the back of my hair will probably be long enough by then that I'm getting a mullet. I'm getting my mullet back from 1989, at least for a week or so. I gotta have a mullet again. But anyways, we worked our butts off on Saturday and we got all of the drywall on the ceiling. Me and my bud Robert and my bud Justin, we cranked it out. I was so tired by the end of the day. I'm, I'm a solid 10 years older than Justin and way more older than that than Robert. Thank God for those guys because I was feeling old by the end of the day. Those guys were a huge help to me though. We got the drywall on the ceiling and let me show you what I'm doing now. Check this out. Is this great or what? We are making progress. I gotta do some work up there. I gotta trim out the drywall around the skylight opening. And then I have to add drywall in there, but that's stuff I can do myself. So if we walk back here, you'll see every bit of that drywall is on the ceilings. So we got the holes cut in the ceiling, all of these six inch holes for the can lights. They're not really can lights, but they look like can lights from the bottom. So I have to cover all of those holes from the attic side with fiberglass insulation before we do the blow-in insulation. That way the uh, blow-in insulation doesn't all go falling out those holes. So I got my little attic steps here and I did some of this yesterday, but I discovered pretty quickly, I am way too large of a person to do this easily. That and the rigor mortis that comes with being 50 years old makes it difficult. So I'm taking this, these big old chunks of uh, fiberglass insulation, putting them over top. See if I can show you here. Over top, like right there was one of those holes. So I shoved it all in there, but this space is not big. I think probably from the peak of the truss to the bottom of the truss, we have not even four feet. So this six foot two body has a hard time crawling through here. Now, if I actually had like a platform to crawl on, it would be a lot easier. So I'm kind of working on that right now. And it's cold up here, but I got to get this place all sealed up. You guys see my breath? Ooh, it's cold, cold in the attic. So I got to get this place sealed up. Just double check everything. Sorry for my hand in the way. Um, got to double check everything. Make sure we're all good to blow in the insulation. I went up to Menards yesterday and bought 34 packages of blow-in insulation amounting to almost $1,300, but that'll give me supposedly an R50 value up here. So like 16 inches thick. So today I'm working on all the finishing touches up here so that we can blow in that insulation. I need to go rent the machine, find a helper, 
and get on it because the sooner we can get the insulation up here, the more heat we can hold downstairs. So let's get rolling. I know a lot of you have been saying, you know what, we should build a house because Matt has made it look so glamorous and fun and every part of it looks super enjoyable. But I have to be honest with you, what I'm doing right now really sucks. It is not fun at all. I'm up in this attic and I'm making a couple runners, which a couple two by six runners that I can actually crawl across because it's just a 412 pitch. There's not a lot of room here. And uh, it, this is not glamorous. This is not easy on my 50 year old knees. Well, I gotta do it. Nobody else is here to do it for me. I need to hire a very tiny person who works cheap. So, hang on, I'll flip it around. So I'm practically belly crawling through here, putting these two by sixes across here. This would have been really thoughtful to do this before we put the drywall up, but nobody thought of that. So I gotta do these all the way down to the end there, just so we have a place to crawl on in order to blow in this insulation. This might be the gnarliest I've looked in a while. So I went and get some knee pads out of my shed because walking up there on my knee pads, oh, it smokes. That is not easy. So I'm gonna drink some coffee a minute and then I'm gonna go back up there and show you what I've done. All right, I'm above the, that's the front door up here down below the attic. I'm putting insulation above all of these little circles we cut out for lights so the insulation don't fall through and I'm running any extra I have under these two by six runners that I have just to help fill that area in. You can see here is my skylight. I am super glad that I insulated that before we did the drywall on the ceiling. But if we look all the way down here, I've got all the lights covered and I've run insulation under all my two by sixes so that we can walk across here and blow in the insulation. If I was three foot tall, this job would have been a breeze. All right, I saved a little bit of it so that I can wrap it around this um, steel tubing that we have our wires running down to the island. I'm gonna wrap that up, insulate it, tape it up good, and I think I'm out of here until we rent the blower machine. All right. Check this out. This is what we call mask beard. Yeah, it ain't pretty. You don't go out in public like that. Of course, I'm getting to the age where I really don't care that much anymore. I can't wait to have a mullet though. That's gonna be awesome. I might even do some racing stripes, lightning bolts, or the letter Z. I did that once before. That'd be cool over there. So you might have figured that out, that that was not my favorite job. So I'm gonna move on, at least until we have to blow in that insulation to something more in my wheelhouse, like finishing these boards and getting those on the wall. That's more in my wheelhouse. So I can finish that wall all the way across. And uh, I have some errands to run too. That's right in my wheelhouse. I gotta go pick up all that blow-in insulation. So, I'll be back. And you'd probably never seen me look this cool. I look like John McEnroe in the 1980s without the beard or with a beard. One of those, yeah. 